Koala. Hey guys and dolls, welcome back. Today I'm in my dad's kitchen and I think it's time for a bit of a foodie chat because I haven't done like a lifestyle video in a while and I'm having a big L struggle with this. Dairy everything, okay? I want you so much. If you watch my channel, you might know that I am not really supposed to have dairy and things. All the very beautiful tasting foods and milk products and cheese and everything like that reacts really bad with my skin and my general digestion and bloats me and all sorts of things. Some of you guys have been so unbelievably amazing by like tweeting me, because I've asked you a couple of times in videos now to like tweet me like no dairy, no cream, no cheese and stuff like that. And thank you to everyone who has been doing that because I actually find it quite motivating. And when people really hold me accountable and stuff like a lot of my friends are holding me accountable. In this video, I just want to talk a bit about why it's so difficult to stay off dairy. Maybe you're vegan and maybe you're doing it for animal rights reasons. Maybe you are doing it for environmental reasons or maybe you're doing it for your own health. I'm not saying at all that everyone watching this video should go dairy free. There's many reasons why some people avoid eating dairy and have the alternatives instead. So if you're interested, stick around because I've got lots of different alternative things to show you guys that I have been having. I have them all laid out in the table here. Like you can't see them, but I can see them. Ooh, oh, what is it? You'll never know. Well, you will know in a few minutes. Stop being giddy. Okay, so with like dairy free, the reason I find it so difficult, I think, is because like when I was younger, I lived off dairy. Like, so human beings are kind of programmed to go for the combination of like fat, and carbs like sugar so you know when you see foods and you taste the delicious foods that have a combination equal of fat and carbs think everything delicious like pizza chocolate ice cream there's a certain amount of sugar and a certain amount of fat and the combination is like ecstasy in the mouth it's like orgasmic it's so delicious and it gets some people very very hooked um i think i'm a super taster and i saw a documentary about this once and it was like showing all the taste buds, is that what it is, on your tongue? And at the back of my tongue, the way that my taste buds are imply that I am a super taster, which means I taste things very strongly. So when I eat, I often make noises and I moan and stuff like that. I just enjoy the process of eating so bloody much and that made getting over eating disorders a lot more difficult for me. So it was quite a long process for me to get to a point where I can eat normally and just listen to my body but yeah like some nights I'll just be sitting there like drooling over the idea of having something with dairy in it and I, I I'm trying so hard to get out of that because for a long time I was I was eating quite well especially mainly for my skin um for a good couple of years there I was avoiding dairy a lot and then around VidCon time I think it was in LA and I just started eating it again don't ask me why and then like I went to London I've gone to London several times and I'm finding it so hard to stay away from it because everyone else eats it like everyone else tucks into their cheese and like really enjoys it and I'm sitting there dribbling at the bloody pizza I've been eating a lot of pizza which is my downfall and like cheesy pasta and um, dairy chocolate like that and stupid things like these like just dumb dumb things like this this is just like healthy breakfast biscuits. They're just, they're crap. Like if you look at the ingredients, it's like really long and there's like whey powder and stuff. And whey powder is the thing that worsens my skin. I am not supposed to put this milk into my coffee. I can have any of these three alternatives, like, or there's loads more. So I've got coconut milk, almond milk, organic soy milk. Um, I try to have organic soy when I can. Don't know why, just read papers that that's better for you. Um. But like there's hazelnut milk, there's oat milk, there's all sorts of things that you can kind of train yourself to like. And I know a lot of people try these and they're like, oh, it's disgusting, it's not the same. Like in tea, there's no milk in this tea. I have almond milk in it. It takes 28 days to form a habit and you can get used to it if you just keep on forcing yourself to have that in place. So just give it a whirl, give it a whirl. For me, foods with dairy is like comfort food. It really comforts me. I love snuggling and cuddling on the couch with a blanket and watching a movie and indulging in really comforty foods. And it's just, that's my happy place. Always has been since I was little. So 
finding things that satisfy me just as much as those things has been difficult. But I've found some things I'm gonna share with you, the things, even though I adore milk chocolate and stuff like that, when you don't have this for a while and instead you have dark chocolate, this is um, an organic mint one by Green and Blacks. And I'm a massive fan of dark chocolate now because I like made myself have it over time. Forced myself to pick this instead of this. 70% is the best if you can get that. Get onto that or 80%. The thing with this bad boy is that it's extremely sweet. There's a lot of sugar in it and it's very Moorish. You could like, well, I look, whenever that was opened, I ate all of that. Like I could easily fly through the whole bar of that. Whereas if I have a couple of squares of dark chocolate bar, I'm satisfied quicker, I don't need as much, there's not as much sugar in it, there's healthy fats in it, so it's kind of, um, it's just a lot better for you in general, and there's no dairy in dark chocolate, in proper dark chocolate, so try and get onto that, because your taste buds can change, and you can start liking it over time. I also love the brand Naked, and I know this is a very big hit and this thing, and it is also something that you can learn to love, like you can learn to love healthy things like this. These are the new ones, like salted caramel fruit and nut nibbles. And these are my favorite ones, the cocoa orange naked bars. I had them in a favorites video before. So they usually feature like foods and snacks and stuff in my monthly favorites videos. But all these are is raw fruit and nuts and they have like flavor in them. And they just kind of satisfy that urge for like cake or something like that. Peanut butter, I love combining peanut butter with fruit. So I'll stick it with a banana, I'll slice that up and like make little banana little sandwiches. I always try and get peanut butter that doesn't have a ton of sugar and stuff added. I like having this with apple, with like a baked apple or even with a sweet potato baked. And that sounds really weird. I know it sounds weird, but I promise you it's like really comforting. So if you bake one of these, in the oven or even turn it into like sweet potato fries. I have a whole section of recipes on my beauty TV website, which is linked down below if you wanna check that out and support my channel because I use that instead of like Patreon and merchandise and stuff like that. But yeah, so bake one of these and then get a spoonful of this and like cut this open and mash it into the middle. And it's really, really nice. And that's good for you. Like these have complex carbs and lots of vitamins that are good for your eyes and your hair and your skin and stuff and this has healthy fats and it's very satiating. So I love those. Avoiding butter is killing me because I love butter, but I don't know, like butter doesn't affect me as much. I just try and like not have it. And I've, I've read a lot of research that suggests that butter is actually better for you than all like the fake spreads and things. And my friend who has a postgrad in nutritional science has told me that butter is completely healthy when it's from like cows from farms and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm trying not to have so much of it just cause it's dairy and stuff. So I've been having hummus quite a lot on sandwiches. It's nice with chicken. And what hummus is, is like a paste made from chickpeas. So it's this, it kind of looks a bit gross. And when you first start eating this, you may not like it, but combined with things like bell peppers, chicken, in pita breads and stuff, I really, really enjoy hummus. Very easy to make as well in a blender if you've got one of those. Fecking cheese is my favorite favorite thing ever and like oh i haven't found a good dairy-free cheese like if you know one please tell me and if it's available in ireland i'm moving to london soon so i know i'll find it easier over there but just while i'm here like i find it so difficult to find a nice dairy-free cheese this is where i kind of practice my 80 20 rule a lot so i'll try and have like good food and like non-dairy 80% of the time. And that keeps my skin okay. If I go 100% dairy free and like stick to my skincare routine and stuff, my skin does be pristine and so like uncongested and stuff. But if I do have some dairy and I still use my Clearogen and my Sunny Clear and do my normal skincare routine that I've shared with you over and over again. If I do that and keep the dairy low, my skin is like better. It's like, it's okay, I'll have, I might get the odd breakouts down here and kind of, oh, stupid face. I'm 26 now, like why does this still affect me? Seriously. One thing that for some reason has never affected my skin is um, yogurt and this is a Greek one. This is another one. This one actually has lots of protein. It's skier from Iceland. And um, yogurt, I don't know why. Maybe it's like really low lactose levels or whatever way it's processed that has lots of probiotics and stuff. 
but my skin has never suffered when I only have yogurt in my diet. I don't know. You need to keep a food diary for these things, people. I keep like telling you guys to keep a food diary, but I mean it, like do it for like two weeks, check down everything and like note down the reactions of like how you feel, how your body looks, your skin, all that kind of thing. If yogurt doesn't agree with you though, you can have soya yogurt or like coconut yogurt or whatever. This one is just like plain with almond. What am I doing? I'm trying to get used to my new camera. Can you tell? There even exists dairy-free ice cream. I'm not lying. Look, this is one of the ones that I really like. It's by a brand called Nobu and this one's chocolate and toasted almond but like they've vanilla, they've lemon and things and it's really healthy. This is like full of healthy fats and things which is great for your skin and your health in general. This has coconut milk, honey which is a natural sweetener, avocado which is the best, cocoa powder, toasted almonds and Irish sea salt. And like it tastes delicious, it's satisfying, it gives you that, it's not quite as good as Ben and Jerry's, I'm not going to tell you fibs, but it'll do. Like right now, I literally just want to get this block of butter and peel it open and eat it. Like, I, why is this so annoyingly hard? There's just a little update on like my dairy free struggle and like some little vegan foods that I'm kind of enjoying eating instead. I'm still loving the medjool dates with peanut butter in the middle. I'm really enjoying looking at like websites full of vegan recipes and things and making like vegan pancakes and all that kind of good stuff. There's a lot of cookbooks that I've been reading as well, like The Happy Pear, Madeline Shaw's Get the Glow. And yeah, if you know of any amazing dairy-free recipes, leave them in the comments below for everyone to read. Just let the comments be like a little directory of sorts for people like you and me who are dealing and struggling with this stupid no dairy deliciousness and stupid spotty faces. I want it so bad! So guys, I'll leave you there and I'll be back really soon with another video. I'm going to start posting way more often. Um, come follow me on Twitter because I post there multiple times a day and I love chatting to you there. I love chatting to you on Instagram and I've got Facebook. I'm just everywhere. And then my battery died, but I love a thumbs up and come follow me on Twitter. Bye. Oh, I'm so awkward.